So, Harry, uh, you had an interesting story to tell about the Loch Ness Monster back in 1952. You and your mum, Greta Finley, were at the top end of Loch Ness at Old Doody Pier. Just tell us what happened that day as, as, and how, what you saw. Well, I was just school age at the time, age about 12, 13, and we went there for a fortnight's holiday, carnival at Old Doody Pier. And this particular morning I was out fishing, sitting at the end of the pier, and I heard this unusual noise, not so much of a boat, but something similar. I heard the, the wash on the shore. I looked down and saw what appeared to be the monster. So at that time I dashed back to the caravan and alerted my mother, and she came out, and we by this time the monster had reached the pier. And we stood, stood on the shore at the side of the pier watching it, as it was say before it submerged, I, I, dashed, I had time to dash back the caravan and get my box camera at the time. Came back, I was trying to focus it. I almost had it focused, ready for the shutter, when my mother grabbed the camera out of my hand because she thought I was too frightened. But it, and unfortunately, the opportunity was lost. But we had an excellent view of the monster, and uh, I don't know what I could like it to, but it was. Jet black, I would say, about 20 to 30 feet long. There were two humps visible above the water. It's not to say that it could draw itself into more humps or whatever, but it, what took my attention was its long neck. It had about, oh, it was about three feet in length, quite erect, with uh, a big head at the top of it, i.e. the size of a football. But what took my attention was the two two little prongs sticking out the top of its head with a wee ball at the top of them. Not unlike a snail, although I couldn't say it was anything similar to that, but that's all I can describe it as. And then just, just as that, as the monster went down, submerged again, it showed a big wake of wash up the shore because of the size it was and how deep the loch was. And that was their opportunity going like. But it was certainly an experience and one that I would um, like to, uh, the chance to see that again like, but my chance was gone. Well, Harry, so how would you describe the skin? Uh, it was very smooth and uh, jet black and quite smooth, uh, smooth as in a seal, just like a seal, and jet black and shiny, quite there's, shiny. So it's reflecting the, the light and Yes, so uh -huh. mm. And there... Uh, you saw no features at all on what you presumed was the face or head? No, I couldn't comment on the face as such because it was a side-on view we got. Right. Just the side of the head, I couldn't see it in the eyes or front of it at all. It was a side-on view. But what, what was prominent was the head and the, the the two things sticking out of its head. Like, like I, I just can't say antlers because people might think it was a deer, but it wasn't antlers like that. It was just two prongs. Two prongs maybe about six inches long. And the curious thing was, you, you mentioned that the whole thing just seemed to move as one. The, the neck didn't move up its own accord. Yes, it just moved as one, yeah. And it submerged that way as well, it just went... Just went plummet straight down, yeah. Like a sinking stone. Exactly, yes. I mean, I say there was still two hums. But it's not to say it could have done us into more hums. Mm -hmm. It just saw two hums above the water level at the time. So there was no diving to submerge no, like no, a no seal down, would do. just straight down. Straight Interesting. down. Interesting. There wasn't a, wasn't a gradual, like its head, neck going down, and it bowing down, down to go down as it was flexible. It just went down as one leg. It's like it was a totally rigid. Yes, exactly. Yeah, just mm, let say so. And there was no indication that it was aware of your presence. Not really, no. But no. The, fa the fact that it went down so promptly ma makes me think it might have been aware of our presence, because it had, it had come out along that maybe 200 yards along the loch before it came to the pier. Right. But I can't, I can't say if it was in view all that time or not, because I dashed back the caravan to uh, alert my mother at the time. So, yeah. So at, at, at its closest point to you, how close do you think it was to you at its closest point? Well, at the very most, 30 feet. 30 feet? Very most. And I wow. see, I could hit it with a stone. I could throw a stone at it and hit its, hit its body. It is. Close. Yeah, because that's yes, definitely one of the closest sightings on record. Mm. And when it submerged, you, there was a wash hit the shore? Oh yes, as soon as it emerged, 
the water, the, like, what, like, like this is soapy soap wash, came all the way up the shore for about uh, 100 yards anyway. Mm -hmm. we, we sort of walked along, ran along the sort of shore, thinking about coming come up surface again, but that never happened. So, I mean, one, one of the leading critics around that time, 19, he wrote, Morris Burton wrote a book in 1960, and he called the, the Elusive Monster, uh -huh. and he he covered all the major sightings photographs up to that time, including your mum and yours, mm. and he suggested that you only saw a deer with its... No, no question. No his question ears. of a deer or anything in that family. No question of that. Yeah. No question. I did. No, I'd, I, I refute any of these um, comments, but to what could have been in that respect. And any other animals that might be in the loch, seals occasionally get into loch? Seal, seals, the only thing I could liken it to, but as I say, it was too large for a seal. Yeah. The length had it, but in a smaller variety, I would say, could could have been a seal. Right. But the, the long neck and the head and the prong... That, that throws that out, out of yeah, the right. equation, yes. And otters as well, which are obviously as well, yeah. smaller than any of these They're other smaller. I say this, this, uh, this um, a thing... Beast of also was at least twenty feet long. So at least twenty feet long. Yeah. Two black humps. Two black humps. And a long black. A long neck elongated neck. The far mm. featureless head. No, uh, no, e no. I couldn't tell. I couldn't tell the ears or something. I couldn't comment to that at all. Now, the only thing I noticed, noticed was that the head is the size of a football. A football. Maybe a foot, a foot, a foot round on the top of this long neck. And you'd say that. But the the body of the creature overall was featureless. There was no blotches or patches. No, no, not at all. All I saw, all, I'd say, body wise, all I saw was the two humps actually. Yeah. Two humps, because that's all. It's a bit visible above the, above the water level. I'm not saying what, what was below the water level. You know, I couldn't comment on that. Whether it had any, uh, how big it was below the water, or whatever. You know, I couldn't, couldn't comment on that. But there was two humps above. How how fast do you think it was going? It wasn't good fast at all, really. Like a, a just jet? Very, just like a, a smooth, a very, it's very, a, what's it say now? It was quite slow, actually. Mm -hmm. It wasn't racing through the water as such as you'd expect a boat that to go. It was just gradual. Just and you'd say that the whole thing was in view for how long? Oh, well, it, 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 when, I, when, I, when I went back after the camera, it was in full view for about, oh, 10, 20, 30 seconds. Now, during the time you during were trying to... It took a lot of time to get the camera focused and I was still able to, to get it focused without pressing the shutter. So that was yeah. a good 20, 30, 20 seconds I would say. Like. And before that, how long were you watching it? Well, as I say, I didn't watch it. I, I, I saw it when it was 200 yards away. <coughs> mm -hmm. But that, before I came up to the pier, I had to go back to the caravan to let my mum, because she was doing the dishes or washing dishes, yeah. or peeling potatoes or something like that. And then she came up with me, and by the time we got to the shore, it had reached the pier. It had covered that maybe 200, 200 metres or 200 yards. 200 yards. I, don't know, I don't know if it surfaced all the way along there or not. I couldn't comment on that light. And you said you were one click away from the best well, that's photograph. All that was one click. I, I figure with the shutter, ready to click it. The only reason I took so long was I hoped to get as much as I could in the viewfinder as possible before I finally clicked the shutter. And that's how close as I was to it. And your mum grabbed it out of your hand. She took it my hand, thinking I was too frightened yeah. of that. And if she didn't, it was only better. She just held the camera in her hand, and that was it. Didn't even attempt, didn't even try to click it or that. I guess she thought that it was going to remain in view long enough well, for her to do the job. She maybe thought that, that yeah. But uh, it submerged. So it's almost like it was posing for us, literally. <laughs> or what's what a better word? It's posing. It was just in full view, 20 yards away. And, and that, it's as simple as that, you know. Simple as that. Because uh, when the monster were told something sensitive to noise, were you doing a lot of shouting at that time? No, or? They, they, we weren't even speaking to each other. We haven't ever said a word. It was only until... We never spoke to each other at all. As I say, focused on... We just stood there, just... Uh, I mean, I go get it, you know. So afterwards, uh, your, your dad took up the story with Ah, uh, he... We, we told him what we'd seen when he came home at night from his work, and he spoke about it in, in town. Mm -hmm. And it got picked up from there, and the local paper printed it. And you said that uh, you said that some other people saw it the same day nearby. Yes, it was, appeared, appeared, appeared. It's cool to the doors saw it, mm -hmm. but I don't know if anybody, any other, anybody else has followed that side of it up 
or not. So long ago now, of course, but yeah. I mean, how yeah. how vivid is it in your memory? Oh, very very vivid. Yeah. Yeah, it's not an everyday event, is it? Oh no, very vivid. And uh, uh, Constant White, uh, who was author of the book mm -hmm. in the late 50s, uh, she visited your mother? That's right, yeah, she came up and, and she went away with some of my sketches of the monster. And yes, because you, you... I'd been doing the drawing sketches of her nights afterwards to the camera and she thought, it, my mother thought it was because I was frightened of it, but it wasn't really that, it was just that I just couldn't get it out of my mind, obviously. Yes, you were, you were trying to <laughs> express many, it through many drawing. sketches of it, you know. And that appeared in your drawing, appeared in her book, mm -hmm. uh, and then the the sighting again was rerun by uh, another author called Tim Dinsdale. That's correct, yes, I mean Tim. He came up to book. see you as well. Yes, no, not me myself, but my mother, he saw my mother, yeah. Well, by then you'd grown up and left the house, or? No, no, I was in the house, I was yeah. in the, the, the National Service, actually. Which, it was, yeah. The last intake was 1957, I think it was. And I went into forces then, there were two years, and I came back for that, got a job in Perth, and work, been in Perth ever since. So what did the, the guys, the probably rough and ready guys in the National Service think oh, of your they, story? They ridiculed me, and I, but I kept saying to them, I don't mind, I, I know what I saw, and I can tell you, I relate to what I saw, but I know it was something different. It was what they, they, they would be called the monster. So you don't just believe in it, you know it. You oh know yes, it. I know it, I know because I've seen it. There's no doubt in your mind that no what you saw was, was uh, an inexplicable creature of some form. Yes, oh definitely. You have thought through all the various theories definitely. and... I've even wondered myself what it could be, you know, of, of, um, I know the loch's bottomless and my, my mother always told me a story about uh, uh, somebody millionaire lost their the daughter in the loch there and the handle. divers went down and they kind of came back up, they wouldn't repeat what they saw. That was sticks in my mind, that. Did you know of anyone else in your family or friends who'd seen the creature? No, no. Just no. Just I don't know anybody else at all that's seen yeah. it, you know. Only what I read in the books and that and seen myself. But to this day, you're sticking to your story. Oh, yes, definitely. You've told the story to your kids yes. and grandkids. Oh, I've told it. I've told anybody. <laughs> and if they believe me, they believe me. If they don't, I don't mind. Because it's not something you're going to lie about. No. Okay. Well, thank you for your story, Harry. It's a very interesting account.